back to my weekly reviews for Titans episodes. I did this last season for season one. Season two just premiered on DC Universe this past Friday. Well, it's not this past Friday, it's yesterday. I'm gonna be popping out these videos every single week reviewing the latest episode of Titans. And I just got done seeing the premiere and I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. So if you have not seen the premiere for season two, you might wanna click away from this video because I am gonna be recapping and reviewing everything that happened in the episode or at least everything that stood out to me. If you don't wanna know any of that shit, you might wanna avoid the spoilers. So I'm gonna give you five seconds to click away, okay? You ready? Let's go. One, two, okay, Gar turned into a snake, holy shit! Okay, 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 I was just playing. That wasn't a real five seconds. That was just like an initiation to see how quickly you would click away from the video. I'm sorry if you heard that Gar, had, he, you know, he turned into a snake, but Gar turns into a lot of animals. I mean, it shouldn't be a huge surprise. Let's talk about the first half of the episode, which admittedly has some of my least favorite stuff about this premiere. Structurally speaking, if you look at this episode, it's actually the finale for season one. The entire first half of this episode, I'm just sitting here watching it like why couldn't this have been added on to the finale in the first season trigon is here if you saw the finale for season one you know that he is dick under his control not literal di i'm sure he has a penis somewhere underneath his clothes unless of course you're an all-powerful demon and you don't actually need a dick in which case yeah, okay, he's, he's he's doing his thing. What I mean by that is that he has Dick Grayson under his control. Dick Grayson went through a very violent, very dark vision in the finale of season one where he killed Batman at the end of that vision. So apparently in Trigon's visions, you're supposed to give in to the darker impulses of your heart. And if you do that, you basically become a puppet of his, like you become under his control. My favorite thing about the first half of the episode is the fact that Trigon was able to manipulate the rest of the Titans and get them inside the house. And then he was able to appeal to the darker impulses of their soul. And a lot of that made for some really interesting TV. Definitely the darkest story is probably the one with Hank and Dove where Hank is basically he's sitting with her in a living room And he's trying to encourage her to do drugs. These drugs are gonna make you feel so much better It's so much better than anything I could give you Pretty sure he and Don started lighting up and it was either crack or heroin or some mix of the two I don't know what the drug was, but I was just sitting there like holy shit. This is Hank, what the fuck, man? Obviously, the highlight, though, you gotta go with the Robin versus Robin action, right? And at first, I'm rooting for Jason. I'm just like, yeah, Jason, you got this. You got, ooh, ooh, okay, you don't got this. You don't got this. Abort mission. Dick Grayson stomps a mud hole in that ass. Let's just keep it real. He, he beats the shit out of him. It's not even really that close. Sometimes in fight scenes like this, you can't tell who is who, especially because they're wearing the same outfit. But because of the lighting, the way that the shots were spaced out, and because of the choreography, you could always tell which one was Dick and which one was Jason. So I appreciate appreciated that. It was a pretty badass fight, but again, it's no contest really. It ends kind of symbolically where Jason gets the gun that killed Bruce's parents and he uses it to kill Dick Grayson, who should be a mentor to him at this point. All the Titans are kind of like easily manipulated into the house and then Trigon easily puts them under his spell with a whole bunch of dark impulses for their spirit and yada yada yada. Meanwhile, Raven and Gar are running around the house trying to figure out what's going on here, how to stop Trigon, how to get their friends out from under his control. This is immediately what I meant when I felt like the first half of this feels like such a crammed thing. Like, it's weird that it took more than half the episode, yet it still feels rushed. All the build-up for Trigon, all of the foreshadowing, all of the illusions, he shows up in the final episode of season one and like halfway through the episode of season two he's 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 gone he's obliterated he's sent somewhere else it makes you feel like we wasted all that extra time with donna and star and hank and dove and jason and whatever like bringing them there it feels like an excuse just to bring them there so that we can have the new titans just to keep it a buck when it comes to this fight with trigon these people did not do jack shit like they did not do jack shit it was pretty much raven and gar that stopped trigon let's keep it real speaking of gar you gotta feel bad for the dude right i mean this dude is trying his best to help people out. He almost dies at the end of season one. Trigon comes to this world, he heals Beast Boy, and then Beast Boy gets his ass beat again when Trigon sends all the dark versions of the heroes on him. They're just like in a circle, beating the absolute shit out of Gar. Gar can't defend himself, and then Raven, she becomes under his control, reaches inside her heart, he pulls it out, then he puts it on her forehead, it turns into a crystal. This whole time, I'm just like, damn, can Gar catch a break, bro? What the fuck? He's always, why, why are y'all shitting on Gar like this? Gar became basically the MVP of the episode because he transformed into a snake, which I spoiled in the beginning part of this video. First season, the only animal that Gar ever turned into was a tiger, so it was actually really exciting to see Gar turn into a different animal for once, and I'm not sure why they did that. Like, maybe at first he only knew how to turn into a tiger, but I figure he has to know how to turn into more things, right? He was able to reach Raven and snap her out of it. She, in turn, was able to reach Dick, snap him out of it. It's kind of perfect if you look at how Raven's story and this whole Titan show started. You look at how Dick's story started, like them coming together, her having that dream about him and his parents and the flying Graysons in the circus. It's kind of poetic, very symbolic, very parallel-ish, if that is a term I can use. She's the one to save him and that basically she made him choose between her and darkness. And she was like, hey, I'm gonna jump. Like, 
like your parents, you have a choice and you can try to catch me or whatever. I guess that's it's not his choice, obviously, because his parents were killed. He sets it up as a choice within the dream. She's like, basically, okay, you have to catch me. If you don't catch me, I'm going to die. So you choose. Do you want this darkness, this path that you've chosen, or do you want to save me? He saves her, and then Raven is basically OP as shit at this point. She goes to Trigon, and she wipes him away. Let's get this out of the way, too. Trigon, I mean, I love the design for him. I love the look for him. I like the actor that was playing him before in human form, but as far as the CG on Trigon, it could have looked a lot better. Like, for the CW, I kind of get it. A show like this on DC's exclusive streaming service with Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers Television behind it. I just figure you could put more effort into it. You could put more of a budget into the show. You, you could make the visual effects look a little bit better. I mean, we live in a world where there are a lot of TV shows out there that have really good special effects. There are some cinematic quality special effects and production design for a lot of shows that come out nowadays. Oh, it's TV. They, it's not that big a deal. I mean, they don't have the money for it. Nah, they should do whatever they can to make it look as convincing as possible. I love the look and the design for Trigon, but as far as like the CG for him, nah, it just it didn't look that good to me. Sorry. The story with Trigon ends the same way it always does. Trigon shows up and then he's all like, Connor, join me. Together we will rule the galaxy. A couple minutes later, Raven snaps out of it and she wakes up to his shit and then she's kind of like, fuck you. And then he's all like, you bitch, I'll be back. So Trigon's gone. He's poof. He's out of here. And I guess we'll see him some other time. Anybody else think it was kind of weird that Donna said to Star outside the gates, like when they were waiting and she was just like, Titans, let's go. And I was just like, wait, Titan, what? Whoa, wait a minute. Star become a Titan? Like, when did you just decide that we're Titans again? I mean, Hank and Dawn haven't been Titans in a few years. What? what wait, that's weird placement for that line. The more interesting stuff in this episode came in the second half. When Dick finally takes it upon himself, he's like, I'm going to take the kids. I'm going to take them somewhere safe. And we're going to create our own thing. Maybe Titans 2.0. He goes to the Wayne mansion. He has a one-on-one -on -one talk with Bruce Wayne. Now, let's get this out of the way. I love Ian Glane as an actor. I think he was great as Jorah Mormont. And I think maybe he could pull this role off. During this conversation with Dick, I kept thinking the same thing. I was just like, eh, I don't know if I buy you as Bruce Wayne, bruh. Talking about like the way that he sounds, the way he carries himself. You could almost hear that Scottish accent beating on his throat trying to get out of there. It's like, let me out! Let me out, motherfucker! An awkward sounding American accent. You could definitely hear the Scottish try to leap out a couple times, but eh, you know, I, I guess we'll, we'll see how it goes the rest of the season. So Dick takes Raven and he takes Gar. He takes Jason out to San Francisco where apparently he talked to Bruce about restarting the Titans. Go to Titans Tower. Titans Tower is in San Francisco. We get a wide shot of it. It looks really beautiful. Hands down, the highlight of the second half of this episode was the reveal of Slade Wilson. Like, as soon as Jason popped back on TV and he was like, Titans are back, bitch ass! Like, you could see Deathstroke from wherever the hell he was in the middle of nowhere. He gets such a fuck them kids look on his face. Like, bro, it was hilarious. I started dying in the middle of the episode. Deathstroke's probably been out the game for a little bit and then he goes to this other place, this armory where there's a whole bunch of weapons and there's a whole bunch of swords and guns or whatever. You see the outfit. And oh my god, that outfit, it just looks so damn good. The more I think about it and the more I look at it, this is one of my favorite versions of a Deathstroke suit in live action. Like, it's not the best or whatever, but it's definitely up there. I feel bad for those poor Titans. They have no idea what's coming. They have no idea that they have no idea. I'm gonna say a prayer for them because Deathstroke is coming and Deathstroke is about to fuck them kids up. In terms of structure and pacing and stuff like that, it was kind of a clunky start to season two. Overall, it does set the stage for some really interesting things going forward with the Titans, with the new crew in San Francisco. And also, we need to wonder about what Starfire going like what's her story now she said she couldn't go with dick so i'm wondering where, where is she going let me know what were your thoughts about the first episode of season two we're at it i might as well ask you about the finale for season one what'd you think about that since that's basically what half this episode was stay tuned for more videos on titans please like and subscribe to the super fan show if you want more and if you like what you see tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the man of steel